Our next guest, a very talented actress and writer. You know from shows such as Rutherford Falls, American Gods, and Reservation Dogs. She stars in Echo, which is streaming now on Disney Plus and Hulu. Let's take a look. Please welcome to the show, Devery Jacobs, everybody. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. I'm in New York. Hi. Very nice. <laughs> and now you lived here 10 years ago, very briefly, but a different New York than you're probably experiencing on this trip. Oh, 100%. I lived here as like a poor, aspiring actor 10 years ago, and I lived in like a bedroom, one like a tiny bedroom that had no windows and like was infested with cockroaches. So now to be here and to have Marvel be putting me up, it's like a little bit of a different experience yeah. than that was. Always <laughs> try to get Marvel to pay for it. Yeah, I'm learning. Yeah, you're learning. <laughs> um, before we uh, move on to Echo, which is terrific, uh, I want to congratulate you and basically everybody involved with Reservation Dogs with such a special show. <laughs> Three incredible seasons. And you had such a cool arc as a, an actor on that show because you also uh, joined the writer's room and got to direct. That's right. Uh, for the first season, I was an actor and like Sterling Harjo, who's the showrunner and the creator of the show, like he's known to me for years, not only as an actor, but also like as a filmmaker, writer, director. So for season one, I was acting and I was just like, hey, would I be able to shadow a director? And, and Sterling was like, yeah, of course. I mean, FX, like, bless them, they're great. They're like, yeah, we kind of brought you here for acting, so if you could like focus on that, <laughs> that would be great. Um, but then for season two, I came in with like my references. I was all, here's all my writing samples. Like I'd love to be in the writers' room, and and Sterling was basically like, yeah, you don't have to do all that. Like you're come in, like be in the writers' room. And so from there on, um, I was able to co-write an episode in season two, uh, write a solo episode, uh, episode nine of season three, where Laura Dannon meets her dad which turns out to be Ethan Hawke, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, and, um, and then also got to direct an episode in, in season three. It is a show where I imagine being in the writer's room is so special because it was uh, you know, critically lauded for its authenticity. And being one of those really authentic voices must have been a cool feeling, knowing that you were making the show what it was. Oh, it was incredible. Like everyone in the entire show, whether it was directors, whether it was actors or, or writers, everyone was from an indigenous community and, and different nations. So it was something that was really special. It was a, a show that was really groundbreaking. It's bittersweet that we're on our, our final season releasing um, and it's gonna leave a big hole in the industry, but it's the hope that there'll be many, many more to come from there. Uh, this is also, when we speak of authenticity uh, in Echo, which is wonderful, um, you uh, have to, uh, obviously we saw, do a lot of American Sign Language. Was that a something that you have to <laughs> teach yourself? Uh, I didn't teach myself, no. There were really incredible teachers uh, from the Sign Language Center. There was also Douglas Ridloff, who is the ASL master and one of the producers on the project, who was just like fantastic. Um, but yeah, getting to, to learn that language was a privilege, but also like a lot of pressure and making sure that we were able to like communicate with Alakwa, who's like a legend in her own right and is so badass. Um, it, it, was, it was really awesome to be able to do that. And it's something that I'm still learning even after uh, after the show's wrapped. So you were, uh, you played a character, Bonnie, in this that was not in the comics, uh, which is very, yes. when they make a character for you in a Marvel show, that's a big deal. Oh, 100%, yeah. it was great. But you also, not your first uh, Marvel role, you were in uh, What If, and uh, you voiced this character, which is uh, also pretty badass. And uh, was that, this was your first entry into Marvel. Was this a cool experience getting to do this show? It was incredible. So I auditioned for What If in the character of Gahordi, uh, who is Mohawk, and I'm also Mohawk. I grew up in Gahnawage, Mohawk territory. And they were looking for Mohawk speakers. 
I am not a fluent Mohawk speaker, so this was uh, a lot of pressure also to make sure that we got it right. My Doda, my grandmother, is, uh, the prince, used to be the principal of the Mohawk Immersion Elementary School. Uh, my niece is a first language Mohawk speaker, and so it was really special to be able to work on Ganyak Yaha and to be able to bring that character to life. But I, Marvel actually didn't, like, the Echo people didn't know that I was already in another Marvel project, and they, and they asked on set, and I ended up bringing it up, and they were like, oh, we had no idea. And I'm like, I know, because I didn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I couldn't have imagined that like these two very different Marvel projects would have come out like within weeks of each other. Uh, it's very nice. It, very, it speaks to your range. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you did not. Uh... Acting was not your first uh, choice for a career. I should say you probably always wanted to be an actor, but you had different plans for yourself professionally. I mean, I always wanted to be in film and television. It was my dream, but like growing up on my res, there was really no clear path to do that. So I actually like could be considered a certified corrections officer. Okay. Um, which was a very different path, but I wanted to be able to go towards social, social work, which would have had like the applicable credits. And, and I figured if I wasn't able to pursue my love of, of film and TV, then I wanted to be able to help indigenous people. Um, and then I was cast in a role and I was like, I can't do anything else. I just, <laughs> I love this too much. But the hope is that I'm able to do both of those things of, of act, like advocate for indigenous rights and also be able to, um, be a storyteller in front and behind the camera in this medium. The fact that you can act, write, direct, and play two Marvel characters in the same year, I feel like <laughs> there's no reason to think you won't be able to do everything you set your mind to. Thank you so much for being here. What a oh delight to meet you. You guys, that's Debra Jacobs. Echo is streaming now on Disney Plus, and we'll be right back with Nico Carney.